So hello everyone, my name is Sam Harlow and I'm the online learning librarian for UNCG Libraries. Um, UNCG Libraries came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications. This is the eighth webinar for this series and welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx Meeting Center, where we are now, and placed in the library webpage through YouTube, while they will be closed captions and not have participant data available for the public. So right here is the page, which I'm going to throw it in chat so everyone has it. Um, and it will also contain other links to the presentation materials when applicable. So um, I'm going to cover some quick logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Please mute your audio, which I think you've all done, during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but feel free to turn it on at the end of the webinar or to, to participate in the conversation. If you don't have a microphone, you're also welcome to participate in chat. You're also welcome to throw your questions into the chat throughout the webinar, um, and I'll track the questions um, as I am the presenter today. So if there's technical issues, um, because I'm hosting the webinar today, you can just try to put it in chat, then we'll try to go through it, um, uh, and hopefully that won't happen. It's a small group of us today, but um, I might have to take a break to try to help. So if uh, before I get started, is does anyone have any questions? Okay. So today the webinar is on um, teaching online and using the library resources. So I'm going to get started. So this is really just an orientation to teaching online and using library resources. So I already introduced myself, but I am the online learning librarian. I'm also the public health education librarian, as well as the kinesiology librarian. And that brings up the good point that um, I'll be talking about throughout this presentation, but there is a librarian for every subject. So um, no matter what your specialty is or who you're working with in terms of online instructors, we have a librarian for you. We also have a librarian, a data librarian. Again, I'm the online learning librarian. Um, so we have different librarians that go beyond subjects to help with different specialties as well. Like we have a librarian who does a lot of grants um, and more. So um, there's only, you know, a couple of us today. So forget the poll. You can just like in chat tell me what department you're with. And I know some of you are librarians and ITCs, so that's fine if you don't want to participate. But um, that you can just put in the chat, you know, what department you're with. Because um, then I can try to cater some of my stuff to you um, to serve, great. And then um, have you taught online before? And that can be for all three of you. Again, I know Rachel and Anita some. Um, and um, Beth says yes, so that's great. Um, and have you done some, I mean, again, for librarians, I know you have, but um, have uh, you guys used library resources in online classes before? So Anita says yes. Beth says not from UNCG. Great. Okay, cool. So just to get started, um, of course we all know that teaching online comes with many challenges, you know, to do with time management, accessibility, communicating with your students, but UNCG Libraries does provide many virtual services and resources that we're going to kind of quickly go through today. So hopefully that we will help. Um, so, of course, we work anywhere where there's an internet connection, and pretty much a lot of the services that you can get face-to-face, -face, you can get online, which I'm going to go through these different points. So um, the first thing to talk about is that if you, um, if you or your students need help um, with the research process or just need a refresher, we do have tutorials on the research pro process. So um, it's called PATH, and um, it is getting revamped this year, so it will look a little bit fresher and it will be more easily embeddable within Canvas. Um, but we do have this for now where we have stuff on getting question the keyword, types of sources, the library catalog, finding articles, scholarly versus popular, finding websites, plagiarism, paraphrasing, and citing sources. So again, we kind of geared these towards students in terms of either a refresher or getting started with the research process, but um, of course you as an instructor could use it if you're like 
needing a refresher on kind of the stuff that we cover. Um, we're, we do cater, you know, instruction and tutorials to classes, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but this is a great general guide to get started with. Um, we link this a lot of places, but the link is in this presentation, which I'll share with you guys this presentation um, link at the end of this and put it on the webinar guide. So um, we have a variety of library resources that are kind of come from these different places. So we have databases, the catalog, journals, and Google Scholar, which I'll talk a little bit about the differences between these. So um, library, okay, so a lot of times electronic articles are put in journals, um, which nowadays most journals are put online. Library databases are a collection of journals that are subject specific. So for example, there's ERIC, which is a big education database, PsychInfo, which is a big psychology um, database, and they're owned by different companies, so sometimes you'll hear them called EBSCO databases, ProQuest databases, that kind of thing. But then within those big companies, they make more subject-specific databases. So the library catalog is a way that you can search across databases and across journals. So it kind of goes from a level of like journals to databases to catalog. And then Google Scholar um, indexes, you know, all the databases that they can find on the web. So there, it's the academic, you know, version of Google. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences between those. Um, so Google, of course, is, it indexes the entire web, um, but it can be useful for your research in terms of finding great literature, government resources, and, you know, helping develop some keywords. Um, but of course, it's not great for scholarly. Google Scholar is a, um, has a great variety, and it uses um, natural language processing and their own relevance algorithms, you know, because Google comes with all this money, so they can be great for that. Um, but it can be hard to find the full text free PDFs. So there is a link here of how you can connect Google Scholar to UNCG libraries to help you find um, full text articles more um, appropriately. Um, and you, you know, um, we can go over that, there's time, but there's a link there. And then, of course, there's library databases. So the library does pay money to get these databases um, to get you free, you and your students free access to this stuff. But I mean, it's not really free. A lot of times the fees go towards this um, and that kind of thing. But um, it, they're not as easy to navigate as Google, but they are subject discipline. You know, so again, you, it could be better to narrow your search to your subject. And they do have better filters than Google Scholar, so you can limit to like peer review, full text, have a little bit more specific date ranges, keywords, and that kind of thing. So there's positives and negatives to all of that. So if you want to learn more about the differences between Google Scholar, natural language processing, the discovery process, um, Maggie Murphy, one of our librarians, did a really great webinar on this that's about, you know, 25 minutes. So if you're really into this, I would definitely recommend clicking on this link and watching that. Um, she does have a part in her webinar where she goes over the discovery process, um, which I think is really interesting if you're into this for your research. Um, but again, related to this part right here is only about two minutes. So again, it's worth checking out if you're kind of interested in the differences between searching the catalog and Google Scholar and that kind of thing. So, um, of course, we have thousands and thousands, millions of materials. Um, a lot of them are now online. More and more, we do try to buy ebook subscriptions um, instead of physical books and electronic articles. Um, we barely ever get print journals anymore. And we are getting more and more streaming films every day. So um, there's millions of stuff. And just to let you know, your distant students can get books mailed to them if they live outside of Guilford County and they are taking all their classes online. So keep that in mind and definitely advertise that with your students. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the different ways you can find materials online um, really quickly without going into a huge amount of detail. But we have the library catalog, which is that big red box on the front of that library page. So this accesses WorldCat, which is a you know national network of libraries. Um, so we do have these different layers, uh, filters here, tabs at the top. Um, so all does search kind of um, all the stuff. So this can be good if you're looking for articles and you're willing to kind of go through the interlibrary loan process, which is borrowing articles and books from other libraries. If you're not, you might want to search in our catalog, which searches books that we have in the library um, 
DVDs, music, and more, so stuff that we have here at UNCG. Articles such as millions of articles, but again, it can be a lot, um, and DVDs such as our DVDs. So again, the catalog is kind of this large search process because it brings together a lot of different databases um, into one search field. We don't necessarily recommend getting started there, but again, to kind of find keywords, mess with your searching, and for ebooks and streaming film, which we'll cover, it is a good place to start. So if you're really interested in this, you can go to the advanced search box over here, and it does show you what it is searching in, in terms of WorldCat and which databases. You can then alter this to be geared towards your subject, um, so that can be a good way to do it as well. So databases you can find through our database tabs. Our database tab is, um, you know, it goes through an A to Z list and it also provides a link to many of our relevant and most used databases. Um, but we also have guides that I'm going to cover in a little bit that do give you more specific subject databases, you know, that can be better for you to use. Um, but again, it is important to go through our library webpage if you're an online student or if you're off campus because we do pay for these databases and we use things called proxies where you'll, it will push you through a login and if you like Google your favorite database like Eric, it will um, deny you access because it will say you're not paying for this. But if you go through the library webpage, through the database page or through our guides, um, research guides by subjects, which I'll cover in a little bit, it will send you through this process of a proxy where you'll have to log in with your username. So um, be sure to contact your library liaison for your department um, if you want to know a little bit more about the, the databases for your discipline. So we have the journal A to Z list, which is just kind of a way to search through the journals by doing keyword search. You can search through journals through that catalog all box as well, but the journal A to Z list just searches journals. So this can again be a good way if you're trying to look through a journal to see the titles or to find something in a particular journal that can be um, useful. We don't typically recommend going through there and searching um, just for like subject because it is a list of titles. You have to search for the title of the journal, but this can be useful depending on what you're doing with your research online. So, of course, we have a lot of streaming films, which are online films. So we have thousands of streaming films, um, definitely well over, uh, I would say, 80,000 at this point, as well as music. So um, we have this streaming guide that covers a lot of this stuff. There is going to be a webinar on streaming on Monday if you're interested in signing up through the webinar page. But um, there is stuff of the music page. Digital Campus provides access to a lot of um, current films that you can stream for your um, classes. So for example, like, you know, really popular current films can be on there and you can get them online. Um, without copyright issues. And then we do have um, subscriptions to all these different things. So, um, you know, depending on your subject, like DocuSeek is documentaries. Um, films on Demand has a lot of social science subject films. Canopy is one of the largest online educational videos that are pretty current, as well as Sage Research Methods, which has a lot of research methods videos, so just a lot. Again, if you're kind of overwhelmed by this, which I think is easy to um, do, you can always contact your subject librarian and help you. Um, these work off of permalinks and embed code um, that will force logins for your online students off campus. So just again, be sure to go through this guide, contact your librarian to make sure that it's being put into your courses um, appropriately. And again, if you're really interested in this, there is a webinar on this next week. So ebooks are also a great thing for online resources. We have thousands and thousands of ebooks. You can search from the catalog by titles or by subjects to see what we have, and then there's a filter on the left hand side of our catalog search where you can um, limit it to ebooks. Um, we also have a guide on ebooks if you wanted to look at a more like subject specific guide. A lot of these are, um, not a lot of these, some of these are limited in terms of our contracts and licenses with these ebook providers. So a lot of, sometimes one to three students can use them at a time or patrons. So we recommend, um, or like maybe they deny you printing abilities. So we do recommend that you check it out before you just link to Canvas. Um, again, it's always kind of best practice to email us and make sure we're giving you the right link so that online students can access it and maybe to test it before you put it in your Canvas course to make sure you're accessing it from different browsers and that kind of stuff. And again, this is stuff that librarians are happy to do for you in an online course. 
So we also have e-reserves um, where portions, like one chapter or so, of physical books can be put online, or online articles can be put online through Box. So um, again, due to copyright, technically we're not allowed to just like put everything online, even though the library owns some of the stuff. So we do have this web page here where you can learn more about it and email us to learn more about this. It does not apply to film and media resources, so if you see a DVD in our collection or you want us to try to get something streaming, this isn't the same thing. But we do have, um, you know, a technical services department where we can negotiate with um, distributors of films to try to get by you streaming copies of things. Same with ebooks. Um, we can, if you are interested in ebook, we don't have contact your library liaison, and we could purchase it for your department. Um, and we always do try to buy an unlimited license. So again, talk to your librarian about that. So we do also have OER materials where we support the use of OER materials, which are open educational resources. It's a type of material or resource used for teaching online that are available in the public domain that many times are free to use and alter. So if you don't love it, you can edit it to be more geared towards your class. Um, Canvas also has a thing called Canvas Commons where you can search for OER modules that you can just plop in Canvas. So um, if you're interested in that, again, you can contact me and we can try to um, talk about that a little bit later if we have time. But there is a guide on OER materials that I did want to point out where we do have um, stuff about our grants, which I'll talk about later, but we also have OER by subject. So like if you're in the chemistry department, you can come down here and see a lot of the OER materials that we have available for you. So, you know, for example, you could click here and see this is an OpenStax, which is a really popular um, online OER textbook company. And you can view it online, download the PDF, um, download for Kindle, adopt this book. Um, and look at it this way. So um, the OpenStax is really great for like the sciences, but again, um, there's stuff for all the different subjects. Okay, so I've mentioned this before, but the library does create these online course guides that um, help you and your students with their research by linking you to databases and resources specific to your discipline or course. They're really useful for online courses. Like here's an example of the one I've done for the Bachelors of Liberal Arts Studies, the BLS program, where we have getting started with research, finding resources, um, your citation style, and a page where you can meet your librarian. You and your students can also schedule virtual appointments and chat with a librarian, email the librarian, all from this one guide. It also provides you these proxy links to databases and articles and whatever you want. And they are, of course, cater to you and your course. So this is the department guide that you can see here on the left. We make them for whatever courses request them. Where we can cater it to your learning objectives, your assignments. We can include activities and more. We also have subject guides, so like for stuff that maybe isn't related to a course, but maybe are important for your students. Here's an example of one we have for distance and online learning. So um, this could be useful for you to provide to your online students, um, where we do have stuff where they can get help started with research. We have a little video on here of introducing them to the library online and that kind of stuff. So this can be useful. Um, we also provide virtual comp consultations for online students and for online instructors. So we can meet with you through Google Hangouts or WebEx. Um, if you wanted it recorded, we could do WebEx, but Google Hangouts is totally fine for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, and we, of course, gear it towards your specific needs, your research needs as an instructor. We also provide it from uh, to your students, your online students as well. Again, these would go through your library liaison, so feel free to contact your library liaison for your subject to work this out and how they do it. We all kind of do it differently. Um, we also can be in your online Canvas course. So there is a role in Canvas that we created for a librarian where you can enroll us in the People tab on the left as a librarian, and then we can make announcements, participate in the discussions, make modules, and more. So again, it just kind of depends on your library liaison um, and your needs, but that is a possibility. So here are some examples of things that we've done in Canvas or what we can do in Canvas. Up here is an example of how I'm a librarian in a kinesiology course where see I did some webinars and I made announcements about it. I also made announcements specific to literature reviews for students to go through. Um, here's an example of a librarian being involved in a discussion where we can link to things and kind of get involved on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and here's an example of a module where we create a page with activities and links to the guide and our contact information all within Canvas. So again, this just depends on your librarian, but it is a possibility and we definitely um, support it and want to do it in online courses as much as possible. 
Um, we also provide instruction online, so we can do this either synchronously through a webinar um, or we can do it asynchronously through activities, which I'll kind of go over now. Um, so here's an example of how we could turn the WebEx tab on and then create some stuff in your Canvas course where it will be on the left-hand side. We can also create it and put a link to the webinar and announcements and discussion and your syllabus page, I mean, wherever you want us to do it in Canvas. Um, we also can do asynchronous activities. So here, this picture is an example of an asynchronous activity we do with a BLS course where we want the students to go through this Google slide, and then after they go through the Google slide specific to their course about the research project and their final assignment, we'll have them fill out a Google form where then we can kind of give them feedback on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Like if there's stuff we want them to improve on with the research process, you know, sources that we recommend and more. Here's an example of an asynchronous activity, or it could be synchronous in a webinar as well, where you can have them, we provide them group work on a Google Doc. So like we linked it to a library um, guide, um, their course guide, and then we had them click on this, do the group work, provide us feedback, like finding permalinks, finding different databases to use, finding keywords, and then providing us kind of like some lessons learned and questions. So these are kind of the kind of things we can do. It just depends on your librarian, but we are, you know, all of us are pretty um, versed in this kind of activity if you're interested for your online course. Um, here's an example, I think Rachel's in here, so um, of, you know, that she made a new Google site for an online version of CSP 105 where she has them go through the videos, through the LibGuide, and then she has them do some activities through the new Google site. So again, this is something that Rachel does with her department, and this is just a great example of how librarians all do different things for online courses, that we're all involved in the online courses, it's not just me. So, of course, we also have a virtual chat where you can chat with a librarian through the home page or the course guide to get more assistance in finding and accessing articles, research, and more. So, um, you guys can use this as online instructors, but your students can also use this, so we definitely recommend it. Um, for distance students, it's a great service that we're trying to push out as much as possible because the chat is on until midnight on a lot of nights because we know that a lot of distance students have crazy hours. Um, and it's a great way that um, they can maybe either access their liaison through the chat, but if their liaison isn't there, we do keep, um, you know, librarians on the chat up until midnight a lot of nights, so it's a great service. Um, you can access it through the home page by clicking chat with a librarian from your course guides, libguides, by clicking on this box right here, and you can chat with a librarian um, through our catalog, databases, and more. Um, so wherever you see that little chat icon, um, definitely just go for it. And again, we're, we're usually on there a lot of hours. We also have interlibrary loans, so I talked about this with the catalog a little bit. If we don't have resources we're looking for, you can interlibrary loan it. The only issue with this is that we cannot interlibrary loan ebooks or textbooks. So if you're interested in that stuff, again, talk to your li library liaison and maybe we can order it for you. Um, but with regular physical books, it typically gets here within like a week or two, depending on the loaning institution. But for an online article, it can get here as quickly as 24 hours if you put it in you know, Monday through Thursday. If you put it on a Friday, we're not going to be able to get to it until the next week. But again, we go as quickly as possible. Um, here's a video about the ILL process of how to do it, how to look for it, how to put in the order, how to get your account set up in Iliad. So again, we don't really have time for me to go through this today, but if you're interested in this, definitely check this out later. So again, we're in a webinar right now, but we can cater webinars to a course or to a department. So like if your department wants us to come in and do a webinar for a group of instructors, um, whether that you all are adjuncts or um, connected to a department physically on campus, whatever you want, they can be recorded and they can be on things, you know, geared towards your department as well as things like data management um, and more. So always keep that in mind. We also create our own tutorials. So I'm the online learning librarian, I create tutorials, but our librarians are amazing and are really tech savvy and they create tutorials geared towards their departments as well. So we've tried to kind of conglomerate them, or you know, combine them all on this one guide on UNCG Libraries tutorials. I do check it periodically to look for accessibility issues and to add stuff that librarians are doing on other guides, but we have it divided into, um, 
you know, you can access some different things on this home page about online students. But we also have this getting started on research where you can think about the big picture of research, developing research questions, stuff for graduate students, stuff on Google, um, primary and secondary resources, scholarly versus popular. We also have this databases and resources where we do different, you know, videos and um, infographics and more on databases, like here's one on how to use the library catalog, but we also have like one on the Wilson Core Collection that Janae made, and she's on here, um, Eric, PsycInfo. If any of them are out of date or if any of them aren't on here and you would love to see one on here, like let's say you use Sage Research Methods and you don't see one for Sage Research Methods on here, again, contact your library liaison or me, the online learning librarian, and we'll work on making one. Um, we're constantly making them and trying to update them and improve them, um, so just let us know what you want to see on here and we'll try to make it. Um, and we do make it in multiple different, you know, forms. Like you can probably see on here, there's a lot of videos, but there's a slideshow, there's some prezies on here, PDFs, some infographics, um, all kinds of different things. So here's some examples of kind of the stuff that we can do. Um, here's an infographic made by one of our librarians, Maggie, on scholarly versus popular. Here's an example of a Google slideshow that we embedded in a course, so we can, of course, do that anywhere. Um, we make videos on different things, processes, and here's one as an orientation to online students. But again, we love to get ideas from you guys, so if there's anything that you don't see or that you can't find, just let us know and we'll either help you find it or make it. So we also support the citation management tool Zotero. Um, it's free. We definitely don't have time to go through this. We did have a webinar on this that was 20 minutes, and it was a great webinar on getting started that you can find on our um, guide on Zotero, which is linked here. Um, we, we typically do it where, like, your liaison librarian will provide you demos and tutorials on that. If for some reason they can't, you can contact me, and I'm happy to provide you one. We have this guide which gives you a lot of research. It's an open source tool, so they provide a lot of documentation on their webpage. But pretty much what you can do with it is as you're searching for research online, searching for articles online, you can save it on a browser extension, either on Chrome or Firefox. And then it saves to an application where it saves all of your work that you're working on. And that includes books, articles, all different kinds of things. And then when you're ready, it helps you create in-text citations and a works cited bibliography in Word. It also works in Google Docs, but it definitely works a little bit better in um, Microsoft Word. So um, again, we provide a lot of workshops on this. We love Zotero. We like that it's open source. It's improving. There are some bugs with it, but overall, we're pretty happy with it. So here's a little like getting started, just like a like two minute video of like what it can do, where you can find information on contacting your liaison about um, getting a Zotero training. So the library also provides some grants and awards. We just finished wrapping up our OER mini grant awards um, already, um, but we are still taking applications for the information literacy course redesigns. So because we are still taking applications, I do want to point this out, and online courses do, do you know, are okay for this award, but um, it's a, you get $1,000 for you as a stipend um, to redesign a course in fall 2018 to make it more integrated with information literacy. So we define information literate person as being able to determine what information is needed and why, locate appropriate resources, evaluate, synthesize, and critically analyze information, and communicate information ethically and effectively. So if you want to help redesign your course, and an online course does count, um, and apply, you can. Um, there's four awards, I think, for, yeah, four awards, so it will probably be competitive, but this would be a great opportunity for you to contact your library liaison and work with them on what you're thinking about doing. You have till April 27th to turn, on after tapes, ap turn in your application, and if you are on campus, you can come to this panel Q&A on Tuesday from 2 to 3.15, where you can talk to past winners and see what they've done. Um, so, yeah. And like I said, just I would contact your library liaison to help with the application and to kind of get ideas. Um, we also reward these OER mini grants where we give you money if you're willing to kind of let go of a textbook and adapt OER materials or library materials to save your students money. So um, just to talk about this a little bit, using library materials, whether they're OER or not, definitely save your students money. 
which are always great, including online students. So instead of having them have to buy a book or a textbook, if you adopt our stuff instead, whether it be like an article or permalinks or whatever, you can save your students a lot of money. And these are just some quotes of, you know, in 2014, the average amount of student loan debt per borrower was close to, you know, $29,000. Um, and with the OER grant cycle that we did the last time, we ended up saving um, a total of over $200,000 for 2,000 students over 12 classes by getting rid of textbooks. So again, these are some numbers we like to throw out to kind of promote the idea of using our stuff to save your students money. Okay, so we don't really have time in a webinar today to really like play with our website, but I just want to point out that if you're online, you know, if you're teaching online, if you're, if you're talking about the library online, it's always great to start from that library homepage, um, which is library.umc.edu. Um, again, from that red catalog box, you can find a lot of the stuff we talked about today, such as these research guides by subject, journal A to Z list, databases, advanced search, and searching our catalog. So again, finding stuff starts here. Um, it's definitely better to use our stuff through this, again, because of that permalink proxy issue that we talked about. Um, and yeah. So just to review really quickly, we have a variety of resources that all go online. Most of our services can help you online for teaching. We have tools that can help you with online research process, such as Zotero. We have a variety of librarians for your subject and more, such as a data librarian, online learning librarian, and information literacy librarian. We also have a lot of guides and tutorials all online, and then chat online. So again, we're always trying to access you, help your students all through an online um, point of view, uh, online points of access. Okay, so I'm sorry I talked fast, but there was just a lot of to cover, and I did want to leave some time for questions um, for specific departments, or if there's anything I covered that you want to learn more about, or like learn how we could get um, access to stuff, um, but that's the end of it. So are there any questions? Okay. There's the link to the guy which has all the links to the other things that, you know, I couldn't cover in detail. Um, I know there's two librarians on there, so if I missed anything, feel free to chime in. I'm not, like I said, we have a great group of ways on librarians that help. Yeah, Robin said that it's a lot to absorb. I know, it's a lot to go cover in a 20 to 30 minutes, but I tried. And like I said, this will, um, you guys have access to this. All the links are on here. This is a recorded webinar that I will put on YouTube and eventually closed caption. And um, yeah, so you can share it with your department members or other um, instructors teaching online. Um, we are going to try, I'm going to try to organize some orientations for online students starting in August because we want to really try to hit the online students at the beginning so that they don't, you know, kind of get lost in it. So yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, Robin asked if I can send the link. Are you talking about the link to the presentation and to the orientation? Yeah, yeah. I sent it on the chat. Here it is again. Um, and I'll put it on the webinar homepage which let me just throw that in chat again because I know some people came in. And it will live on um, there, um, which that's where all of our webinars live. Um, just so you know, there's still time to sign up for the last webinar of spring 2018. It's me again, <laughs> where we'll talk more about um, streaming media, streaming media um, how to access it, how to make sure you're putting it in your courses right, um, different things we have, um, how to search for it, that kind of stuff. I'm working on the presentation now. Um, again, it will be a quick little webinar, but it's great if you're interested in learning more about that because we really weren't able to cover that um, in great detail today. But you can sign up through that webinar um, link I sent you. There's a sign up form right here. It's still open. Um, plenty of time before Monday. Yeah, so um, are there any other questions before I end the meeting? Okay, great.
great. Um, I hope everyone has a great week. I know April is crazy, but hopefully this helped a little bit. And, um, yeah, everyone have a great day, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, you too. Thanks.